Microcasting for your city. Talk Talkopolis. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Also by Nashville Violins, the string player's number one choice for their string instrument needs. Nashville Violins offers everything from lessons to repairs. Make sure you check them out at NashvilleViolin.com. Hello everyone and welcome Hi. to Football Fantasy here at Talkopolis. We have our resident expert, Nancy, on the scene. She is Skyping with us today because she can't be here in the studio, but she's going to give us all of the wonderful, wonderful happenings in the fantasy football world. We're so excited. So Nancy, why don't we get started? Hey everybody and welcome to Football Fantasy. I'm your host, Nancy Filippelli. And here on the show today, we're going to answer some questions about America's favorite fantasy game and reality team, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, each week here at Talkopolis, we play in a fantasy league with each other, and one of the teams in our league is the Talkopolis Titans, and we play against them every week. So this week, actually, they won, and they're number one in our league, aren't they, you guys? They yes. are. Crazy. Good I job, Titans. I know. Yeah, Jeez. Week, we did not even Way plan on that. I didn't plan for that either. <laughs> I mean, I I'm shocked. I'm just as shocked as you are. So uh, we're going to talk about coaching our teams because me, I was a horrible coach, and John can tell you because he beat me. Um, I had in three players that were hurt. Either they got hurt during the game or they were hurt even before, and I started them. Yeah. And um, one was Akeem Nix, Ahmad Bradshaw, and Matt Forte, who is also out uh, next week. So we're going to talk about coaching, and we're going to talk about the waiver wire and watching the waiver wire and who to pick up that hasn't been drafted in um, the league and who's been blowing up and who's been hurt and picking up their backups because you know that they're going to get some some good time, some good field time. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about the replacement reps and what they are doing to this game and, and the horrible call of the Green Bay Packers, the Monday Night Football. You guys, what do you think about that? Well, uh, I'm kind of lost and confused because I'm new to football, understanding what's going on anyway. And so I think that's a great topic to, to uh, start off with first, is what is happening with the refs? Yeah. And why are the refs going on strike? Why are these new guys in that don't have as much experience? I think it came down to money, like it always does. Um, the holdout sort of, or the strike or whatever it may be, but it's happened before and it's happening now and I think after Monday night's call and um, them losing the game because of a bad call, I think that they're really going to like sit down and go into negotiations and try and work this out and we're going to have them back pretty soon. But as it is now, yes, um, we've been affected. Fantasy football has been affected. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, so people are so furious about it. Do you think there might be a rematch? I mean, I know that's never happened in NFL history, but just because of all this craziness, yeah, especially so much at the beginning of the season, I mean, that everything. could really affect. I mean, do you think it would this first couple games could affect who goes to the Super Bowl? Uh, you never know, and it could. I mean, it's a W, and Ws are what really counts, wins here, and records, and that goes against the Green Bay Packers record. So, um, it could, but then again, I mean, if you watched the whole game like I did and you watched how Aaron Rodgers was sacked eight times in the first half, they're really, to build up to that very final call, I mean, yes, you know, it was a bad call and the game was totally blown and, and, they, de and they did, you know, deserve a W at the end, but to get to that point, um, they blew a lot of plays to be even in that position in the first place. So, um, no, you, like you said, there's never been a rematch. There isn't going to be a rematch. Um, but everyone's pretty upset. I mean, the president of the United States tweeted about it. So, <laughs> so big deal. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a big deal. It's on the front page of, you know, every newspaper. Every team is talking about it. So, and the NFL players are tweeting about it and they're like, uh, they're really upset and nobody's even being fined for talking about it. Their profanity, you know, like. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so give us the recap on the Titans. I was a little confused of what happened towards the end. The game that everybody was talking about. Yeah. The Titans? Oh, when they won, you know, in overtime with the field goal. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they were affected by the call, too, but they were affected in a good way, same as Seattle was. Mm -hmm. um, on the last drive of the, of the game, there was a penalty, and it was a 27, it was wrongly marked, 27-yard penalty. And not only are the refs bad at their jobs, bad at calls, but they're bad at math, too. Because they took, you know, did you guys see that? They put them on the 29-yard line, which was within field goal range when they should have been on the Lions 41. And that would have been out of field goal range. So that gave them the, you know, that, that put them in the, you know, the field goal range to, to kick the winning field goal for the game and win the game. Mm -hmm. So. So that could be why they're winning our fantasy league right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Whoever had blame Rob it all on that. Yeah. I was, I was really happy they won, though. I mean, I could just see people's faces. I mean, it was just finally like, oh, yes, a game, our first one of the season. <laughs> I mean, people were out celebrating and huge groups. It was, I was excited. It's a good thing for Nashville. I was excited, too. I mean, in our favor. Again, like, we got excited because it was in our favor. But, mm -hmm. you know, the Lions fans were pretty upset. I mean, there was a 27-yard penalty for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on my husband, Craig Stevens. <laughs> Ooh, girl. <laughs> to set up the, the game-winning field goal. And uh -huh. it was just, everybody was upset. But we were happy. Yay! Yay. So, John beat you. How bad did you get beat? Oh, I think like 143 to 110. I don't really oh, want to. Oh, man. You talked Brutal. a lot of smack, too. I know. I no, know. I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. Don't try to backtrack. I, I was going to say, did. so right. looking at our company, like, league board, like, is it a little too early to talk, like, a big game? Because I am number three right now. And I'm just wondering, <laughs> like, how much, how much are we going to change in between everything? Okay, well, did you look at your bench players and how many points your bench players got? Because I think that you had a lot more, even though you won, I did. you had a lot more points on your bench and you could have really blown up. This is I know if I started certain people instead of Nick's, Bradshaw, and Forte, who does mm -hmm. that? I can't even believe I did that of all people. <laughs> anyway, I, would have, I might have won mm -hmm. if I started the proper people. There was and just I, one person I should have started, Reggie really? Wayne instead of Steven Jackson. So yeah. what is, what's your strategy now? Like if we're looking at, if this is like we're going into, you know, the next week, like is there a lot of trades happening? Like this being like, you know, this part of the season or should we all be holding tight? I mean, like what would you say to people that are still doing fantasy? I would say check the waivers, check the, you know, see who's blowing up. Coaching is key in fantasy football. It's really an art. It does take a skill. It takes a lot of paying attention. And the people who are like on their computers, you know, Tuesday morning, seeing who blew up and picking them up before anybody else can in their league. Those are the people that are going to take home the title. Those are the people that are going to win. The more people that, you know, focus on those little ins and outs. And also, it can get as deep as starting a running back on your team that, um, say, is playing a defense that is horrible. You know what I mean? Like, say, for example, I picked up Andy Dalton the quarterback for the Bengals. He's playing Jacksonville Jaguars, and their defense is atrocious. I mean, tons of teams are piling up points on, on the Jaguars. So, and he blew up last week, like three touchdowns, um, 328 yards, he completed 19 out of 27 passes. So I'm gonna start him, I think, but I'm kind of struggling between him and Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is gonna come out like boom with you know, a force after that call, being angry, being mm -hmm. sacked eight times in the first half. I think Aaron Rodgers, so it's kind of like you really have to do your homework. You really have to, who do I start, you know, ask your friends, you know, Google it, go online, that sort of thing. Um, so the waiver wire, I'm Googling this, I hadn't heard of yeah. it before. Is it a blog? Is that what it is? No, I mean, it's on your NFL.com. I mean, you can go in and you can see best players available, who's at the top of the leaderboard, mm -hmm. who okay. is it taken by... There's just so many choices on. when you Google waiver wire, like a million things come up. Oh, okay. Well, your waiver wire is, is your own personal waiver wire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm in the know. Leagues waivers. Okay. Right? 
Thieves free agents. Okay. So. Awesome. Nice. Who is available? And also pay attention to your bye weeks too, because I just had to do this when I changed my uh, lineup. Mm -hmm. Two people that are on bye weeks this week, and they both played for the Steelers, and I had to sit them on my bench and start two players that aren't on bye weeks. Your bye weeks this week for week for week four are the Steelers and the Colts. So pay oh, I'm making a note anyone. of that. Make your notes. Good and to know. Steelers <laughs> and the Colts. So who are you playing this next week? Me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I am playing, I think I'm playing you. No, I'm playing no, Tina. No, I'm playing Johnny. Who are you I'm playing? playing balls to the wall. Oh, so you're oh. playing Tina. Uh-oh. Tina. It's going to be intense. going down. Exactly. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I know. Well, thanks for setting in with us from South Carolina. I know. North Carolina. Oh, well. One of the Carolinas. I knew it was one yes. of them. <laughs> one out of two isn't bad. <laughs> On a shoot in North Carolina. And then this weekend, I'll be working in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Nice. So I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. I've never been there. Oh, oh, wow. We'll check it out for us. Eat some You're shrimp and grits. Deal. Yum. Globe, globe trotting all over the world. Well, <laughs> thanks, Nance. Yeah. You guys, I miss you. I can't wait to I see you. I miss you too. I know. Next we'll week, back we'll have a fantasy football date. It'll happen. Absolutely. Get <laughs> our right. shirts on. Perfect. Bye. Get off, we'll get off football on. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 Microcasting for your city. Talk Opolis.